Greetings and welcome to the Arcade. This is episode 31. In this episode, we will take you on an all-access tour of Doc Mack's Galloping Ghosts Arcade in Chicago, Illinois. You never know who or what you're going to see there, so let's get this started. Doc, how you doing today? Doing great. So Doc, the big question, how in the world did you get involved with this hobby in this massive collection? <laughs> It actually all just kind of uh, happened very quickly. Um, we were working with my production company, Galloping Ghost Productions, on, a, on an arcade game. And uh, started, we were going around to places for arcade to find out what arcades had what games. And we ended up really noticing a lot of things about a lot of the arcades around here. Uh, the games didn't work. Um, all of them had mostly the same games and it was it was class it was like they had a few classics a few some stuff from the 90s but um like i the main thing that bothered me was i couldn't find a working mortal kombat one or two machine in the chicagoland area really like, there was they were out there but none of them none of them were 100 percent functional so we started offering the service to fix all of their arcade machines for no profit to us we just wanted the cost to fix the parts and get the parts and everything and uh, just nobody wanted to take any part of it so it just really seemed like there was this huge opening in the arcade industry to where uh, if you had a place with a lot of games and really focused on uh, the quality of the games and the rarity of the games and focused more on other elements such as just like Find, getting like the developers to come out and talk to people, we thought we'd have something really special. Everything really just fell into place. Uh, we found a batch of games for sale out in Iowa. Uh, it was uh, 114 machines. Um, wow! Right off the bat? Right off the bat. It was, we didn't even have a building at the time. Um, literally, I called up uh, my landlord, who I rented a lot of studio space from, and told him, like, hey, I'm, I, we're going to be coming back with 114 arcade machines. I wanted to open an arcade. And uh, he gave us the keys that day before we went out. And even in the process of, go, we had wanted, we had tried to go to a few other towns to uh, open the arcade. And uh, everyone's like, oh no, 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 you can't open an arcade in our town. And there was a lot of bad connotations hooked to arcades. And we had a really solid business model. We wanted to do a lot of educational things um, and just have like a very upscale arcade. So far, our best day so far, we've had 798 people through the door without an event going wow. on. So it's a lot of wear and tear. It's a lot of maintenance and always there's always stuff to fix. But, but keeping it alive though. It's the funnest thing in the world for me. It's uh, me and it's me and one other guy do all the tech work and uh, fix all the buttons and wire nice. all the cabinets and love doing it. So love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Unbelievable, Doc. <laughs> that's the that's the thing when you walk into an arcade that speaks volumes like. It's the wow factor. <laughs> we like to have, uh, we hear a lot from the people that instantly the sounds that just kind of greet you at the door. Yep. Uh, it sounds like it should. Like we don't have any like, a lot of places that have like 80s music playing and that's cool. Like so many arcades back in the day did have that, but we just like to have the game sounds. So Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. We are here at Galloping Ghosts. We are checking the atmosphere here. There is just game after game here. Amazing. Amazing bunch of games. Just stunning. Everywhere you turn, we get rows of games. I mean, just crazy. Doc's really put together a really nice, um, nice selection of games.
check it. We have our good friend Jason from Arcade Jason. That's me. Yeah. So Doc, what kind of what's your favorite game? What guy, what's the one game that plunged <laughs> you into this madness? Uh, the first actual game that I bought was actually NARC, one of Eugene really? Jarvis's games. Um, I bought it, I was uh, that was a long time ago. That was ninety-four I probably picked that up. Yeah, that's a cool game. Yeah, great game. Uh, we're actually very fortunate. Um, we had a NARC event here. So we got everybody that worked on NARC out here. Eugene Jarvis, George Petro, uh, Mark Lafredo, Larry DeMar. George Petro had actually given us an unreleased level of NARC. Really? That uh, it was a bonus stage where you're flying the helicopter. And it was something It's not emulated. It's not a name oh, cool. anywhere. And it's a one-of-a-kind thing that you can only play here. How many arcades do you know no, where you can just walk in yeah, yeah. Oh, just, just, just and see the Eugene Jarvis oh, playing oh, Omega oh, Race? Oh, right, Eugene? How many I don't know if you can call it a play. It's, it's, it's a pitch. It is hard. It's good work. Look, Doc, look at who these two guys are. Where would you find these, Doc? Where is he? Doc, right here. he is. Okay, look at this game. Argus? So Argus, this was an unreleased prototype from Gottlieb. Um, we're fortunate, again, there's so many companies that uh, were creating games in the 80s and 90s that were here in Chicago. Gottlieb was one of them. Um, and the, one of the most popular Gottlieb games was Cubert. Uh, the artist behind the game was Jeff Lee, and he had, was the original creator of Cubert. And he's literally about five minutes away. So we had actually met him out in Wisconsin at the uh, Midwest Gaming Classic. And uh, since then, he's been stopping in almost every week. Nice. He'll, he'll be here. Um, but we were doing the uh, Wizard World show and just sitting around talk with him. And uh, he had mentioned, he had brought with him a friend of his named Tom Melanowski, who is a programmer. And he started telling me the story about this game called Argus that was never released. It was out. At, it was a prototype. It made it out to beta test, but was then canceled back in 1982. And he was saying it was some of Jeff's best artwork and was a really fun game. Uh, talking with one of my regulars uh, the next day, he had actually mentioned it that he had played it on Mame. So uh, th there was one board that was known to exist, and. Uh, it, it had been backed up on MAME, which was great. We were able to actually talk with him and uh, with Tom Malinowski, Jeff Lee, and David Bonecutter, who was the lead Gottlieb hardware guy, and uh, figured out how to actually remake the board using an original Cubert board. And there's a bunch of jumpers that needed to be changed. Oh, cool. But the ROMs were there. So we were able to bring back Argus oh, from wow. being lost. Um, we went with an original Cubert cabinet, so it's the original Cubert yellow. Um, but then Jeff Lee made all new artwork for it. So it had a new marquee, new screen oh, bezel, sweet. new control panel, new front, and custom side art. So this is like a one of a kind. This is a one of a kind, oh. custom made. Uh, with the help of the original people that worked on it. Oh, cool. Definitely a very cool game. And again, one of the biggest draws to this place is having like so many one-of-a-kind games. I like that. I didn't know this game used a trackball. Yeah, this was... They were trying to get the license for Superman. Oh. And uh, that was... Uh, Superman 2 was coming out at the time, and they were kind of designing this and hoping that they would get the Superman license, and that oh, didn't... Wow. That fell through. So they just had it as Argus. And uh, there's so many stories about even the characters. Um, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Ron Waxman who was, uh, he really wanted to see this game came, come out. And, it's so uh, cool. He had recently passed away. Uh, but it, it's one of the, the cool things to see that a game that, and it was important to guys like Jeff Lee and Tom Melanowski that. Uh, uh, Ron be kind of remembered, and you can see this is actually Jeff's drawing of Ron Waxman up oh, at the top. Wow. So 
it's kind of a, a, a living tribute and uh, something that it's it's nice. Just a way to kind of get a bigger picture of from the people that actually created these games. I was surprised when Let's you said you were stuck on NFL so it's 99. Well, I like this game because there's no penalties, so you can tackle guys when uh, going, out, going out deep or whatever. Uh, no penalties. Kind of an older game, but it's, it's a fun game. So you like this one better than the new, like the 2000 in the yeah. Showtime. Yep. Yep. This is what you like, right, Rob? This is my game. Oh, yeah. Yep. What about the F-Zero? Oh yeah, that, that's that's a game you don't see too often, but that's that's a fun game too. That's a nice game. Yeah. Yep. Very rare game. It actually uses the Battle Zone style sticks, but they swivel. Oh, I didn't know that. that's different. Uh, the hands were actually Warren Davis's hands. Really? And uh, that kitchen is Jeff Lee's kitchen when he lived in uh, a few towns over. So. Oh, cool. Just even little things like that, just hearing like how these games were created and the development stories behind them is it's it's I love just the cabinet. unbelievable. The cabinet's it's just, cool. Oh yeah. It the cabinet it uh, it was a very complicated game at the time. People didn't really understand it. Um, the cabinet itself is, is amazing and it had a high price tag, so not many of them actually sold unfortunately. But uh, we've had so many of our regulars come in and Go after the high score on it and oh, play it for cool. score. So it, that's another scoring is such like a huge element here at the arcade as well. That's so. good, absolutely. This is one that came out in. Um, it was supposed to come out in like 97, 96, 97. Um, it was canceled. Midway had bought Atari, and there were five games that were canceled. Uh, one of which was Primal Rage 2, uh, Freeze. Beavis and Butthead, Vicious Circle, and then there's another fighting game that was canceled. And I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about Beavis and Butthead. Like, we actually have it here. You do? Uh, there was only 12 cabinets made. Um, several have been broken for a very long time. Uh, we managed to find one. Uh, the guy did not want to sell it. He had it. That he bought it for like a dozen years ago from a, an MTV auction. Oh wow! And he had it worked for about a month, and then it broke, and it has been sitting in his house broken for a dozen years. Jeez. But he decided that he had had all these people come out and try to fix it. Nobody could figure it out, so he figured he would at least let it go. And uh, look we, at you guys, right? We got it. We had it fixed within 24 hours. Nice. So it was. Uh, Having access to it, we were able to figure it out, and then we were able to kind of let everybody else know, like, if this was what was wrong with yours, maybe this will help you fix it. Oh, cool. So, cool. But there's something so special about arcade games that these games have been around for 30 years in some cases, and people people travel in just to play them. Um, we've had people travel in from Japan and Chile and Luxembourg. Um, well, literally, the, any day that of the week you can come in and you'll find somebody that's traveled in from out of state just to come play here. Oh, awesome. And uh, we've ha we had one couple hitchhike in from Oregon. Really? So it's, it's amazing to see what this place means to people and that people make the trip out. And uh, we've had people here on their honeymoon and vacations. And it's, it's been unbelievable, the fan response to it. Yeah, it's awesome, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going? Good man, we're 720 skateboard game. You know I what love I'm that. Doing? I saw it here somewhere. Rich is playing it. Well. Did you just you didn't design that one, did you? No. You didn't have <laughs> <laughs> Hey Richie! How are you, Jeff? How's it going tonight, my friend? Things are great. I just got off the aeroplane, went over to Raw Thrills, hung out with Eugene Jarvis. Nice. My idol. Got to hang out with one of my childhood idols today. Spent the whole day with him. We were playing Big Buck Hunter. Oh, nice. Yeah. And now I rented a car, and I only I, I was my hotel is right by where the event is tomorrow. But I rented a car just so I could come to see Doc. Doc's arcade's awesome. Right.
Yeah, I'm from Japan. Oh, we, nice. We are friends. Nice. Yeah. You guys have any arcades in Japan? Yeah, yeah. So we, we like old arcades. Classics. Yeah. You guys ready? The bus is here. The bus here, Let's do this. See you, Doc. See you, hey, so see you guys. Take care. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you. Alright, and there we go. Let's do this. Rock and roll. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Arcade Hollywood. Special thanks to Doc Mack for giving us the fantastic tour of his arcade. Please visit www.gallopingghostsarcade.com for more information on how you can visit. Once again, wanted to give a shout out to my good friend Mike Miller and his band Origami for providing me with all the excellent music for this channel. You can check out Origami at origami.tumblr.com. Coming soon to Arcade Hollywood, we will have an exclusive chat with Brian Collin, the creator of Rampage and tons of other classic arcade games. We will have a fall project Number two, a dedicated Bally Midway Journey arcade game. We will have exclusive footage from the Kong All 5 and more footage from the AVGR Expo. This is a great time to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget you can check me out on Twitter, Arcade Hollywood at Hollywood Arcade. We are also out there on Facebook and Google+. Please email me with any comments or questions at DiscoHollywood1 at gmail.com Okay, this does it for another episode of Arcade Hollywood. Until next time, rock on! Rock on!